Coming up, today we're literally giving you three chords in the truth of the song that has left an indelible mark on rock history. So this one was written and recorded under the gun. Songwriter had to write the tune and record the demo for it in just a couple of hours to hit a deadline. And after he finished recording it, the song was so corny, the lyrics were, this guy, he fell on the floor just laughing his head off. Now it turns out the song completely flopped the first time around. Uh, and he was so embarrassed by the, the track's sexual undertones, the lyrics, the writer actually tried to hide it from his publisher for a long time. But somebody found it, and it was picked up by today's famous group, and they piggybacked on someone else's recording session because they had no money. They laid it down in something like 20 minutes, but as fast as it took to record, this song was no flash in the pan. Uh, the song that was a big joke made his writer so rich, he was gambling $10,000 a day in Vegas. Story is coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you remember getting up at the crack of dawn to watch Saturday morning cartoons, you're going to dig this channel of deep musical nostalgia. Make sure, first of all, to subscribe below right now. Uh, push the big red button and click the bell so you always know when our latest and greatest interviews and videos are coming out. We also have a Patreon. You can check us out there. You can also become an honorary producer to help us curate this history. Apologize, I got a little bit of a cold, so if you'll bear with me here. Declared by many to be the first British punk band, today's feature musicians gave us a surefire classic if there ever was one. And the original writer laughed the entire time he wrote it. Thought it was a big joke. Little did he know that that joke would bring in a lot of money for him. I'm talking about the Trogs with Wild Thing. Oh, this is such a great story. The Trogs, actually short for Troglodytes, a.k.a. Cavemen, they were a garage band that originated in Andover, England. In 1964, Reginald Morris Ball, later famously known as Reg Presley, was working as a bricklayer while at the same time playing in the first lineup of the Trogs. When that formation disbanded, Reg and drummer Ronnie Bond joined up with guitarist Chris Britton and bassist Pete Staples, uh, members of a rival Andover band named Ten Feet Five. But by 1965, Reg took on lead vocal duties and the guys were soon discovered by up-and-coming producer Larry Page. Uh, Larry Page had struck gold with one of the most influential rock bands of the 60s, first called The Ravens, and they were later renamed The Kinks. Of course, The Kinks scored big time with their breakout number one UK hit, You Really Got Me. Following this burst of success, Larry Page signed the Trogs, and in 1966, the band recorded a one-off single for CBS Records called Lost Girl. It wasn't a hit. However, their next single would be, famously becoming an essential entry into the story of rock and roll. The song was, of course, Wild Thing. You make my Although popularized by the Trogs, Wild Thing wasn't actually written by the band. Rather, it originated with a songwriter named Chip Taylor. Now, throughout his career, Taylor was a prolific writer. He composed songs for Willie Nelson and the Hollies and Linda Ronstadt and Janis Joplin and Jackie DeShannon, among many others. Notably, one of his biggest hits was Angel of the Morning, a top hit for both Merrily Rush in 68 and then Juice Newton in 1981. Angel. However, before Wild Thing, it was a different story. You know, at this point, Chip wasn't a household name when it came to writing hits, but he definitely wanted to be. Said Chip about it, and I quote, I was basically a country writer to start with from New York City, which I was one of the only country writers there. And I started writing some rock and roll songs that pretty much sounded more Memphis-based than New York-based. Now, Chip had yet to have any commercial success in the genre. But after putting some rock and roll demos out there, his reputation started to grow. Then in 1965, Chip got a call out of the blue that would change his entire career. On the line was a r man Jerry Granahan, and he needed a rock and roll song as soon as possible. So Granahan had a New York band called Jordan Christopher and the Wild Ones. And Jerry would say, you know, I heard you were writing some interesting rock and roll songs, and I have a group that I'm producing. They have their own songs. Not really happy with them. 
I'd like to augment all their songs with a new song. Do you have one or could you write one for me? Taylor, he was flattered by the request and he said, well, when do you need it? Granahan said, I need it tomorrow. Now this was about two o'clock in the afternoon. And as Taylor recalls, he just laughed and said, well, let me see if I can write something for you right now. So he hung up the phone, but it was crunch time even more because he had a country demo session booked for later that afternoon. But you know, Taylor, he wanted to break into rock and roll in the worst way. So he got right to it. Undaunted, he picked up his acoustic guitar and he started strumming. In a matter of minutes, wild thing, it just started coming out. Said Chip Taylor about it, I just wrote a verse and a chorus and I couldn't come up with anything else. Finally, I realized I didn't need anything else. I could just say the same thing and change three words from, well, I think I love you to, well, I think you move me. What more do you need? You move me. If you recall, Wild Thing famously includes just three chords and some key pauses and hesitations throughout. These were actually because Chip didn't know where to go with the song. So not knowing what to do, he just left empty spaces in there, actually. So with this country demo session fast approaching, Chip got into the studio, turned down the lights, and he just started riffing on what he had. Later, he admitted he still had no idea where he was going to go with this song, but he just let it flow, following the emotion that he was feeling at the time. Chip says he didn't take it seriously at all. The lyrics were a big joke, and after he was done, he just laid on the floor laughing his head off. But despite his uncertainty, by the time this take was done, Chip Taylor had more or less punched his ticket to rock history. Wild thing, I think I love you. Now, all in all, Taylor was thrilled with his new song, but at the same time, he was a little embarrassed by how overtly sexual it really was. The lyrics, while on the surface, appear benign, but they're highly charged sexually if you read into them. Said Chip about it, and I quote, I remember that it sounded so real to me and so sexual to me, and it captured exactly what I felt in the moment. Well, Chip made his delivery to Jerry Granahan and the Wild Ones recorded the song. They issued it as a single. You make my heart it went nowhere, completely flopped. And Chip, he started to have second thoughts. He was actually really embarrassed by the song's sexual tone, so he decided to hide the demo from his publishing company. But I wanna know for sure. In fact, one night, Chip collected all the discs that were filed under W, and he hid them on the top shelf where he thought nobody could find them. It didn't work. Someone must have found them, and we're gonna find out what happens next after I recognize our sponsor, Zenny, I wear the glasses I always wear. Right now, at our link below and our info button right up here, you can get a complete pair of prescription glasses starting at just $6.95. That's right, under seven bucks. I've heard from so many of our viewers who have like four or five pairs of Zennies and they love the variety for the price. Go get your best deal right now. Check it out at our info button. But I wanna know for sure. So within weeks, Wild Thing landed in the hands of Trog's producer, Larry Page. Actually, Page initially wanted Wild Thing for the B-side. His idea was to have the Trogs cover uh, the Love and Spoonfuls, Did You Ever Have to Make Up Your Mind? And then he'd bundle that with uh, Wild Thing. Not often kind, did you ever have to make up your mind? However, Reg Presley and the rest of the Trogs, they disagreed. Instead, they pushed for Wild Thing to be their next single. This even though at first they thought it was really corny and the fact that it had only three chords. Recounting his initial reaction, Presley said, I took a look at the lyric sheet and I read, wild thing, you make my heart sing, you make everything groovy. And I thought, what are they doing to us? But then Reg listened to Chip's demo, just the guitar and him, and he thought it was incredible. The rest of the guys took a liking to it as well. For the Trogs, recording Wild Thing in the studio actually rivaled the speed in which Chip Taylor laid it down, let me tell you. So I guess Larry Page had already booked studio time for an orchestra session, and he asked the Trogs to wait outside in the van, you know, just in case there was any studio time left at all. These guys had no money. Turns out there was barely some time. Not much at all, though. 
The Trogs had about 30 minutes to set up their equipment, record two tracks, and get the hell out of there. And they did it like it was nothing. The band quickly got set up and they powered through Wild Thing and another song that was called With a Girl Like You. And they did it in about 10 or 15 minutes. It was all mixed live as they recorded it. And it was done. Pretty amazing. Come on, hold me tight. Also, I got to mention that the song's instrumental break was actually done by an ocarina. Uh, a rare instrument in rock. The original version recorded by the Wild Ones had whistling in that break, but the Trogs recognized an ocarina from Chip's demo and they replicated it for their version. Uh, it definitely gives Wild Thing a very distinctive sound for sure. Incidentally, it would be two decades before we get another hit song that used that instrument. You actually have to fast forward all the way to 1986 from there where John Mellencamp busted it out for ROCK in the USA. Remember that. Strangely enough, Wild Thing was actually released as two singles by two labels at the same time, one via Atco Records and the other by Fontana Records. Fontana was the Trog's British label and they were initially hesitant about releasing Wild Thing in North America. So the Trog sent their manager to the US to secure a distribution deal with Atco which he did. But it turns out Fontana actually changed his mind. So both record labels claimed ownership of the Trog's recordings and both released the single. And because both singles used the same master recording, Billboard combined the two singles into just one chart position. So with their sales combined, Wild Thing became the only song to reach number one on the Billboard Hot 100 while on two different labels. Isn't that crazy? It was a fiasco. But even so, Wild Thing was a smash around the world. Not only did it go to number one on the Hot 100 here in the US, it also achieved that same mark on the Cashbox chart. In the UK, Wild Thing went to number two in May of 1966, and almost everywhere else it broke top 10. It went number five in the Netherlands, South Africa, Sweden, Austria, also Ireland, it went number two in Canada, and it went to number one in New Zealand and Australia. Wild Thing. In the years since its initial run, Wild Thing has had uh, a lot of pop culture love. An impressive resume for sure. It's appeared in movies and TV shows like Wonder Years and Quantum Leap, Doogie Howser, MD, Full House, Beverly Hills 90210, Encino Man, uh, Dawson's Creek, Garfield, Switched at Birth, Castle, and Rabbit Hole, to name a few. You make my heart sing. And of course, Wild Thing famously played a key role in the 1989 film Major League, you know, featuring Charlie Sheen as Rick Wild Thing Vaughn. Uh, of course, the cocky reliever with serious control issues. Wild Thing played whenever he came into the game. That version that was included on the soundtrack is actually a cover by Punk Rocker's X. So speaking of covers, Wild Thing has been covered by a long list of bands and artists. There's Rick Springfield, The Cult, R.E.M., Cheap Trick, Van Halen. The Pretenders, The Runaways, Brian Adams, Chris Isaac, Spin Doctors, Elvis Costello, Prince, Bon Jovi, Bruce Springsteen, The Cure, Jane's Addiction, Aerosmith. Crowded House, Billy Idol, Three Dog Night Did It, and Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. And if you think that's an impressive list, it goes on from there. Not long after the Trogs version went to number one in the US, Chip Taylor, the guy that wrote the song, he produced a novelty version of Wild Thing by Senator Bobby, a sound alike for Robert F. Kennedy, and it was a top 20 hit. Uh, come on in uh, and hold me tight. And then at the Monterey Pop Festival in 1967, the Jimi Hendrix Experience performed their own unforgettable version of Wild Thing, after which Jimi sets his guitar on fire. Very cool. It's no surprise that Taylor cited this as one of his favorite versions. So Wild Thing has made so much money that its writer, Chip Taylor, has admitted he used a lot of the money for gambling. He used to gamble about $10,000 a day, and uh, because he was counting cards so much, he got kicked out of just about every casino in Vegas. That's a fact. But I won't know for 
So the follow-up to Wild Thing was the other track that the Tribes recorded in their Hurry Up Studio session. Remember, uh, it was called With a Girl Like You. Actually, this one beat out Wild Thing by one spot in the UK, going all the way to number one. However, here in the US, there were some complications thanks to that uh, double record label release. It turns out With a Girl Like You was issued as a B-side on the Atco record single, which stunted the song's progress. And with a girl like you, it tailed off significantly in the States. It only went to number 29. From there, the Trog's fortunes began to wane in America. Singles, I can't control myself any way that you want me and give it to me. They all failed to break the top 40. Cause when I'm with you, I can control myself. Any way that you take me. In the UK, it's definitely a different story. There, the band continued to churn out hits. But in the States, the Trogs only had one more hit, Love Is All Around. That one reached number seven on the Billboard Hot 100, making the, the Trogs' second biggest single in America. And uh, they weren't a one-hit wonder. It's all around me, and so the feeling grows. So nearly three decades later, the Trog's legacy received a welcome boon when in 1994, Love Is All Around was covered by Wet Wet Wet. This was for the Four Weddings and a Funeral soundtrack. Uh, the song was actually a massive hit. It went to number one in the UK for 15 weeks. Actually, was the best-selling single of 1994 in the UK. I feel it in my toe. But let's be honest, here in America, when you think of the Trog's, you think a wild thing. I mean, this song is an institution. So reflecting back on the track, Chip Taylor would say that the Trog's version was exactly what he had in mind when he wrote the song. Said Chip about it, and I quote, you are always concerned as a songwriter that if somebody recorded your song, that they would capture the feel of it. That was the most important thing to me, that they got the, the juice of it. The trog sounded exactly like my demo. I did it with a big acoustic open hole guitar and chugged away at it, stomped on the floor, and I did a few things uh, to really get the juice out of it. And when the trogs did it, they did it with an electric guitar, but they gave it exactly the same feel. And oh, what a feel it is. Wild thing, I think I love you. Thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about the Trogs and Wild Thing. What a crazy story. I love these stories, especially from the 60s. It's like they have even better stories from these songs. What are your memories of the Trogs and Wild Thing? And what are your thoughts on it? Let's have a great discussion below. Uh, if you like our content, we invite you to subscribe below. We'd love to have you as part of our community. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.